loop. Uh, we're going to be in Python. Um, I want to ask Python 2 or 3. We can switch later, but I think right now we'll probably use Python 3 because that's the default. Um, so an event loop, right? It's this idea of wouldn't it be nice if we could write code that would be called when uh, when something was ready, basically. So let's, let's start with a little chat app, okay. Um, we're going to have here uh, server. Where, where were we? I think this was, uh, no, it doesn't really matter. Um, All right. All right. So sockets, right? So it's not important that it's sockets here. The, the point is it's something that blocks. And the big reason a lot of us are excited about event loops are because network programming, right? We want to write a web server. Um, so now I'm checking if I'm online. It seems like maybe I'm not. I'm confused, but I think I'm on. Um, so we have something that blocks. In fact, let's not let's 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 not have chat services talk to each other. Let's talk about two things we want to do, which are read from standard in, and read from a socket. Um, so this is going to be a client program that talks to something. I'm going to write the server over here. And the cat. Um, right, I'm listening there, and then here we're going to say socket. So we're gonna have a little conversation here. Um, just say while true, I would like to uh, message equals raw input or input in Python three. So this is a message we're gonna send, and then we're gonna ask that send that message. And then we're gonna print the s dot v uh, decode. I hope they're using UTF-8 too. So let's give this a shot. It's now a client. All right, RecV takes another argument. Once again, I'm going to check. All right, we're good. Um, right, it takes. Let's get some bytes. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to have to restart this each time. Hello. All right, set over here to my server. And then if this were to send something back, hello there, and it would have it. But what if this tried to send another message, right? So in our code here, if you'll remember, um, right, if we look at uh, screencasts, um, if we look at client, you'll see that right now we're probably stuck on this line right here, right? We're waiting for input. And if a server were to send something else back, we wouldn't receive it here because we're blocked on this one. So what's the solution we might jump to immediately? Well, what if we made both of these non-blocking and just pulled them back and forth, right? Um, so I'm going to skip that. I assume we're familiar with that. But that's the that's kind of the first mental jump we should make. It's like, ah, we could use different APIs to do these non-blocking and jump between them. Um, but we can do better than that, and that is that we can use select. Import select. And the way the select works is that we say readers, we don't care about these ones. 
select dot select and we give it three lists oops and select lets us block on multiple things at once so we're going to go back to the blocking apis the ones we're using right here we're not going to use those um, asynchronous ones or the the non-blocking ones we're just going to use blocking but we're going to say all right i want you to let me know when sys.standin is ready to read and i want you to know let me know when um, that s that connection one. I'm going to change this to, I don't know, connection, connection, and connection, oops, connection, connection, right? So select lets me block on both of these at the same time. Then in here in reader, so this is still going to be a waiting blocking thing, but I'm going to say, okay, for reader in readers, um, there could be several here, readers, and probably not, but what if you know, both things happen at once? So for each of these, um, if reader is um, connection, if that's the object I get back, then that was the one that's ready. So let's um, receive from that and print it. Um, otherwise, it was probably the other thing, sys.standin, in which case, let's go ahead and um, hmm, how is this going to work? At that point, they've hit enter, so we're ready to read. Um, so we can go ahead and say message equals sys.standin.readline. And then I can go ahead and print. Well, we're not going to have prompts anymore. Okay, and then go ahead and send that message encoded. All right, so let's try that. So now we should be able to send a message, send another message, and get messages back. One at a time. Looks like I have a new line problem somewhere, um, but I guess because I'm entering the new line on the server is the problem. Um, great. So that's the beginning of an event loop. Um, but obviously, in an event loop, um, we kind of want to tidy up this bit and keep these. You know, these parts are application code, and the rest of this is sort of framework. You know, event loop code. So we're going to start to do some object stuff. Um, all right, it'd be nice. This is the event loop stuff that normally would be part of your library or something. So let's take this out. I'm, I'm going to go straight to classes. Yeah, I think so. Let's call it, let's have a thing called a reader. And it has two things. It has needs to be able to report a file number. Um, and so I'm going to call this our connection. Um, it needs a file number so it can go in this thing, return, and it needs to do an on read for what we're going to have to do once it pops up in this list. Um, a connection is going to return a file number. Let's see, def init self. Um, I'm just going to hard code that we're connecting to this thing for now. Self dot. Uh, um, s equals socket dot socket and let's self dot s dot connect to this thing yeah oops I don't need anything for that one. Um, def file number return. Um, so it's tough. These don't actually be file numbers. They just have to be the objects 
um, I'll just call it, well, they, they do have to be called file number here. Um, this one's going to return self.s.file number, and this one is going to return sys.standin.file number. Um, the Python select interface is kind of nice where you can put in objects like this so long as they have those file number methods. So we're doing that with our own custom things here, def on read. Um, on read, what I want this to do is um, just print what you get. I'm going to say message. Oops. Uh, what are we whining about here? Um, wow, okay. I should just turn syntastic. Um, great. Turn it off. All right. Um, message equals. Let's just print it. Input is going to be and what we want us to do on input is um, Sender, how about? Um, Okay, and we receive them, there'll be bytes here, and to print them, we can probably print bytes too, but I'm just going to decode them, decode. Hopefully stuff we get back is UTF-8. Alright, and now input's going to take connection, which is the thing we use to send. And now we did all that work, right, so that we can in here say, um, connection input reader for reader and readers reader dot on read that was the point of all that let's try it um, let's restart the server hello there great we have both ways communication now, if we're going to imagine that this is code from somewhere else, right, that we want to, want to deal with, then I'm going to call it, um, let's see, def event loop or something. Um, in fact, let's, let's go straight to a class. Event loop def, we could add a re reader. Yeah, so now we could do something. All right, I'm starting to get kind of fancy here. Why it's taking so long? Oh, whoops, whoops. Fantastic. 
Great. And now we're going to say something like event loop equals event loop. We could event loop dot add reader connection. And this is starting to look like async IO, I mean, a little tiny bit, right? Add reader, add reader of input reader. And it's got me the point where we could take this, right? And, um, well, uh, event loop.py. Ooh, that might be a standard lib thing, is it? Um, no, it's not. It's fine. Or why they're so slow. Um, great. So now we have an event loop in here that I don't know will probably work. And there we go. We've got an event loop because now we can say from event loop, loop. Another step might be to make it a singleton, right? So we don't have to instantiate here. We could just like, get the global one or something. Event loop not forever. Yay, works both ways. All right, so that's our intro to select. Um, this can get a lot fancier. And the main way is that select, of course, can, you know, it takes three arguments. We're only dealing with one of those. Um, that's for things that are ready to read, things that are ready to write, and connections that have errors in them. Um, we do this with any file descriptors. On Windows, it's a little less powerful, right? Because they're split, they have to be sockets there, I think. It's harder to make them like standard in or something. Um, there are fancier things than select that you want to use instead. Epoll or KQ, um, or KQ on Macs, Epoll on um, Linux. I don't understand the Windows story at all. 